Okay, 20 Democrats are going to battle it out, 10 tonight and 10 tomorrow night. President Trump says he's going to be on a plane. He's not going to live tweet his own analysis. He's now saying Democrats are, quote, boring and unexciting. This says President Trump's economic approval rating is above 50 percent. Yeah, but we have now a Hill-Harris poll. It found nearly three-quarters of Democrat or Democrat-leaning independents said... There are too many Democrats running for president. Let's bring in former DNC interim chair and Fox News contributor Donna Brazile. Great to see you, Donna. Thank you so much for joining us. Hey, Liz. I remember back in 2015, 2016, Republicans said, we got too many people running. <laughs> right. And look what happened. I mean, as you well know, Liz, once the, the voters start uh, making their minds up and we start having a, a real contest and not just debates, it's going to get small really quickly. But you see, I just put my eyes on this little card. It looks nice. And tonight <laughs> I'm just going to put like check, check, check. It's going to be an exciting night. Liz, what are you planning to cook to, to watch this debate? Or what are you going to eat? Think, I think a sweet mac and cheese and maybe have some veggie chili on the side. But here's what I want to, you know, Donna, you're, I love having you on the show. Here's what, what I want you, your opinion on. What did you think? There was this New York Times opinion piece really blessing Joe Biden, saying that he's, quote, like watching an actor who can't remember his own lines. He's speaking <laughs> gibberish. They attended three of his campaign stops over the weekend. They said his performance was unnerving. And the Times is saying that's why they're limiting his public events. What was your take on that? Well, I saw that. And, you know, look, I've heard Joe Biden speak in public uh, before. He's always on fire. But maybe this wasn't his weekend. Maybe the reporter, you know, went to some events where the vice president was not at his full, you know what I like to say, his, his full passionate self. Look, <laughs> I don't care about these polls right now. We don't have a front runner. We have a very open process. We have 24 people. As so you of see, two you don't think ago. Biden's the front runner because uh, well, the well, Democrats the are going to really push Biden on things like he inappropriately touched women, you know, his Anita Hill performance, you know, for flip flopping on, you know, the, you know, the Hyde Amendment and for being tough on crime in the in the 90s. So you don't think Biden's the front runner anymore? No, I, I, we, we have a front runner based on the polls, but in terms of the, the process itself, oh, okay. uh, a, a, as you recall, in 2008, Hillary Clinton was the front runner. Barack Obama won the nomination. At, at this point in the, in the contest, polls really don't matter. Um, perhaps it, it, it tells you how well you should uh, calibrate on some issues or what state you should be in right now. If you're Kamala Harris and you're number four in California, maybe you should go home. But the point is, is that these polls right now, only give us what I call a, a sharp view into where the Democratic electorate is today. But months from now, we don't know. That's a great, you know, that's an interesting point. I hear exactly what you're saying. Because, you know, we have, you know, the Wall Street Journal, for example, saying Biden's experience is his strength. The more he apologizes for his past, the weaker and less presidential he sounds. But you're saying it's more like a taking the temperature of how the Democrat electorate is. Because, you know, here's the thing, too. The, even the Washington Post is now going after Joe Biden, saying he's 1% Joe, not middle class Joe. That's <laughs> undercutting him. You know, there's millions of dollars in books and speaking deals. There's four and a quarter million houses he's renting in McLean, Virginia, with 10 bathrooms and the like. What was your take on the Washington Post ripping into Joe Biden? It, it, honestly, it, it, it really looked and felt like they were ripping back into Hillary Clinton. If you recall back in, again, 2015, 2016, we were talking about her wealth. We were, we were talking about, you know, the fact that she owned homes and, and that she gave speeches That's like right. many other public officials yeah. when they leave office. So, look, right now, what Democratic voters and those who will be tuning in tonight, they're going to look at these candidates and they're going to size them up. And they, the first thing they're going to ask themselves, am I ready to hire this person? I mean, this is a job interview. And some of these candidates will pass the test. Many others will not. You know, Donna Brazil, we love having you on. Joe Biden really did fail as, a, as Obama's job training czar. $600 million in job training grants. And GAO and other studies said no jobs created. I mean, so that's really the thing. I mean, Trump created, you know, six times the manufacturing jobs in his, la in his first 24 months versus Obama's last 24. It's going to be about jobs, right, John? Donna, final point. Well, here's the final point. When, when Barack Obama and Joe Biden came into office, you know we were in a deep recession. Yeah, but a lot they of presidents, a, a lot dug, of presidents us, inherited yeah, recession. Yeah, but you know what? They dug us out from a hole. They built the With foundation. With a lot of government and money and so, a lot of Federal Reserve so, help. And I am so, yeah, and we bailed out a lot of people on 
Wall Street. Mm -hmm. What I what I appreciate is that Donald Trump is building upon that. He's going to make the economy stronger. He promised a renaissance. We're going to judge him by his record. It's his record that we should be talking about, not the record of former presidents. But if we want to talk about his record, let's talk about it. But you and I need more time <laughs> to do that. Look, let's watch the debate. I'm going to have some red wine and some good, <laughs> delicious Cajun popcorn. Uh, I'm going to enjoy myself and Liz. Please call me at any point. I will I'll love to. I'll email you and tweet you and text you. Well, you have a more sophisticated you. you have a more sophisticated palate than I do, Donna Brazil. Thank you so much for coming on. Thanks for your insights. Great interview with Donna Brazil just Thank there. Thank you, boo. Come back Thank soon. You.